Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 8. We open on Casa Doom. Durin finds Deesa tending a wounded dwarf. It's the ring! No matter what you hear, don't follow me. Passionate farewell kiss as Durin heads down to talk to his pops. And we cut to the king, who's all by his lonesome, just toiling away in his mine. Ah, I see now why the entire army was needed in Casa Doom. 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 We pan down. 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 Uh-oh. Flame. Take off the ring. Dad pauses and keeps mining. I said take it off or I'll take off the whole hand. Sure, you can use an axe, but can you use it against your dad? No, I can't. Duran starts reminiscing about arm wrestling with his dad when he was a kid. You would let me lift my hand a bit, make me think I was winning. But then you'd slam my hand back again, and that's how I knew. There was nothing and no one stronger than my dad. Because he couldn't beat his own kid at arm wrestling? Be strong again, dad. Take off the ring. I beg you. A dwarf should never beg. Keeps digging until he breaks through. Well, that went well. Come and see. We're rich. And they show this massive, expansive cavern that just has veins of mithril everywhere. And once again, I am baffled by how these dwarves who have lived in this mountain for so long, but what's on the other side of the wall is just a complete mystery to them. But to see our mountain the way I do, you have to wear a ring. Honestly, if that's true, it doesn't say so much about the ring's powers as it does about the dwarves being bad at mining. It's not our mountain, Dad. You taught me that. But it could be. Sorry, whose mountain is it? The king's face starts glowing. Firelight in the caverns below. I've got a bad feeling about this. Run, father! A fire whip gets dad's foot! But dad is much heavier than Gandalf, so it doesn't manage to pull him all the way down. It just kind of drags him a few feet. The Balrog roars! Durin tries to go for it with his axe. Cute. But the Balrog tosses him back. Balrog does some parkour, showing off for his new audience. Very cool. The king takes off the ring. Very dramatic music plays. I never let you lift your hand. It was all you. Are we really talking about arm wrestling again? Forgive me, my son, King Durin. The Balrog roars! Dad goes for the Balrog. Durin goes for Dad. But Deesa and some fellas hold Durin back so Dad can go to his doom for no reason whatsoever because no way him attacking the Balrog is going to make the slightest difference, but go off, King. Meanwhile, in Galaxy's Edge, looks like Great Value Gandalf decided to ignore that crazy old hermit who told him to find a stick instead of helping his friend. Well done, Great Value Gandalf. Absolutely the right call. Great Value Gandalf runs into the Bad Wizard. Was beginning to think you'd never show, old pal. Old pal? Are you saying we know each other? Know each other? Ha <laughs> ha. We go way back, man. In fact, it was your freaking idea for us to come to this place. You said we needed to work together to take down Sauron. But, but, but crazy old hermit told me you just want to join Sauron. You want answers. Well, I got answers. You just come right this way. And my not hobbit pals? I've taken care of it. Out you come, girls. The sand people have a knife to their throats. Whoa, now, hey, I said not to hurt them. I for sure totally said that. You can have them when we get what we're owed. Listen, old pal. I clearly made a bad call trusting these guys. I swear, I was just trying to help your little friends. My people were once kings. An entire people that were all kings? Was there like a kinglier king that was in charge of the kings? Wham! Knocks out the sand person, which sends the others fleeing. Dark wizard. Now that is so offensive. I do not identify as dark. I can't believe you would label me like that. Did I not just prove that I'm a good guy? A good guy who kills people. Cut to the dead body. You pity the dude who had a knife to your throat? Yep. Pity will not defeat Sauron. And defeating Sauron, that's endgame. Or do you want to become his successor? Walk with me, and we can both be his successors. Um, never? Then you leave me no choice, old friend. Waves his staff, and boom, the hills break apart. The not-hobbits look mildly startled by this. I would be screaming. 
I'm killing your friends so you'll understand how bad Sauron is gonna be for Middle-earth, because he's gonna kill lots of people's friends. I'm only killing yours. Great value Gandalf looks like he's gonna try to do something about this. Breathes him in place and tells him he's grounded. He's gotta think about what he's done. Looks like it's doomsday for the not hobbits. But wait, Rey is here and she's force lifting the rocks. Meanwhile in Numenor, the bells are a ringing. What the heck? What is going on? I'm just the bell ringer. Don't ask me. Guards come marching in. Thank you, faith leaders, for coming to this little meeting. Why are we here? Well, you see, we figured out how Muriel pulled off that little stunt. She's got a big evil friend. False. She has no friends. Aside from the Valar. You think so? Take a look at this. And they hand him this long scroll with lots of writing on it. Sauron? All leaders of the so-called faithful are hereby declared traitors. We cut to guards all over the city, posting notices, knocking on doors, yanking people out of their homes. We call on all Numenorians to oppose this threat. Last time we checked in, Muriel was found innocent and restored to her place as queen. So like, by what authority is Farazan commanding the guards? Also, how is attacking his own people going to get him the popular vote? Why is Lendiel's daughter going with this? I... The tree is dramatically shedding its blossoms. Elendil's daughter goes outside and sees the chaos that erupted the instant that Farazan's announcer guy told them that they're traitors. I guess the guards all had earpieces in and got to work as soon as they heard the code word. Elendil's daughter runs to the bougie part of town, which has not yet been hit by the chaos. Um, and this part of town is still somehow unaware of what's going on a few blocks over. Dad, listen, there's no time. They're coming for you. Elendil finally clocks the distant sounds of chaos. Are there any faithful here? Nope. And for some reason, he's not just gonna take her word for it. And he starts to try to get in there and check for himself. You want me to tell Farazan that you didn't believe me? Okay, I'm still trying to understand this situation. Farazan decided to round up every person that identifies as religious. And he's doing this because... Um, because he's the bad guy? Cut to Elendil, who's trying to talk Meryl into running away. It looks like she's in the castle, and even though she's queen, she for some reason doesn't control the armed forces, so presumably the guards all answer to Farazan, and I don't see how Elendil could have gotten in there without passing at least a few guards, so... You must travel only by night. Yep. Good. The stars shall be your friends and make safe your steps. Say less. And yours? One does not need eyes to lead in the dark. Huh? What cowardice have I ever shown that would make you think I'd put you in danger to save myself? Is that what she was saying? I'm glad you understood. My place is here. And where is mine if not with you? Oh, just bang already. Oh, plot needs her to abruptly change topic. It's called Narsil. We cut to the sword that's just leaning against the furniture, just like it was any old thing. She is blind, right? Because she did that whole bit about leading in the dark and stars or whatever that was. She appeared to be looking directly at it, and that's what clued Elendil into the fact that that's what she's talking about, because she did not otherwise indicate. So did she put Narsil right there? Why? The white flame. Reclaim your lordship, and with this sword, your destiny. Oh, sorry, wrong movie. Meanwhile, in Eregion, the orcs are still firing those absolutely god-tier trebuchets. The wall is breached, which is generally what trebuchets are used for, but you know, if you got it, flaunt it, right? The city is overrun. Gal pal's girl bossing her way home through there. They come out of the little secret passage and are immediately surrounded by orcs. Who told them about the secret way in? I'm the one you want. Let the others go free and I'll come quietly. You must have some kind of ego to think they're that scared of fighting you. Give me one good reason. I'll give you nine. Dun, dun, dun. Cut to Kelly Belly bleeding out. Hang on, okay. So back to the orcs and Galadriel just now. Do the orcs know about the nine rings? Do they know about any of the rings? We cut away from there and I think it's because they didn't want to waste our time with what followed, which must have been something like, okay, nine reasons, let's hear them. Uh, sorry, no, I was talking about the nine rings. The nine what? Rings? Do we seem like the type to be interested in jewelry? No, these rings were made by Sauron. We're not fans of his lady. 
We don't want any Sauron merch. No, they're evil magic rings. If they're so terrible and important, why'd you offer them up so fast? I just really care about this random group of strangers, okay? I'll do anything to save them. Yeah, sorry, not buying it. Sounds like bullshit to me. No, for real, this is like an amazing deal. I am literally handing you what your boss is looking for just so you let these randos go. Seriously, take the deal. Whatever, I'm tired of this conversation. Boys, grab the randos, grab the girl, and we'll see what the boss man thinks of these rings. Anyway, back to Kelly Belly bleeding out. Sauron shoots another arrow into him. And we've decided to make a pin cushion of Kelly Belly because... Look what you've done to yourself. Is there any point in gaslighting him now? He is seconds away from death. They'll be here soon. Have you ever seen orcs in the heat of combat? They say it takes forever for them to get over their blood frenzy. Tell me where the rings are and I'll give you a quick death. My dude, he's got like 17 arrows in his chest. The time to offer him a quick death was 16 arrows ago. It must be nearly noontide. We used to hear the kingfishers flying to the river. It's a pity how you've silenced them. She needs to sort out her priorities. All I have done has been for you. You're so damn talented. I just want to share your work with the world. Well, I got good news for you. The rings are currently out in the world and being shared. Rings are beyond your reach, as I shall be ere long. For soon I shall go to the shores of the morning, borne hence by a wind that you can never follow. Sauron flicks the arrow, takes up a spear. There are ways of keeping you alive. Must I show you my mastery of that craft as well? Craft? Ha! Your only craft is treachery! Got him. So pure it shall betray the very hand that forges it. Treachery is being forged and it's betraying people? Your words are empty. I gotta say, I'm a Sauron on this one. No, hear me! Hear me! Despite the bajillion arrows in his chest, Kelly Belly gets to his feet. Shadow of Morgoth! Hear the dying words of Celebrimbor! The rings of power shall destroy you, and I foresee one alone shall prove your utter ruin. Well, it's almost like Kelly Belly read the book or something. Uh oh, Sauron's getting a bit pissed now. You're wrong! I'm their creator! I'm their master! No, you are their prisoner, Sauron. Lord of the rings. That's the name of the movie. Sauron sheds a single tear for old Kelly Belly. The orcs finally come in. Are you... Sauron? I have many names. What is yours, Uruk? Wow. Meanwhile, in the Southlands, Isildur gets a visit from Theo. Ill fortune to pack a dagger in a bag. They say it cuts a journey short. Who says that? I tell you what'll cut a journey short. It's being attacked and being unarmed. This one's already stabbed me once. I'd wager the damage is done. Are daggers like viruses? You get hit once and you can never get hit again by the same one? How do you live with it? Had a good healer stitch me up. I mean, about your mom. How in the heck was a sealed or supposed to know that's what you were talking about? Her dying being your fault. How do you carry it? Poorly. Didn't realize that until I came here. Why? Seems there's grander things here than I thought. Enough to make me realize how small I'd become. Are we still talking about your mom being dead? Better start helping them unload. You won't come with me? I like it better being a low man. I liked it too. Hug. And I'm sure if I understood what that conversation was about, this would be a really emotional moment. We linger forever on the door closing, then on a seal door turning around, then the door opens again, but we don't see who's coming in. Change your mind? What? It isn't Theo coming back in? I am shocked. Shocked. Well, not that shocked. She holds up some strips of cloth. To replace the ones Theo lent me. I hear you're building a home. By herself? Hagen started laying the foundation a few days ago. I'm sorry, hasn't it been a few days since you found him again? How, how much time has passed? When he laid the cornerstone, he asked the gods to keep our love strong. As long as the home stood. So the house crumples and so does his love? Is that romantic? I'm happy for you. I always thought his kindness was what love felt like, but when he said that, I felt ill. Yes, it's a terrible thing to say. Why are you telling me this? Come with me to Numenor. Cut to Malfoy disembarking in the Southland. When did he get here? Low men salutations. I'm Theo, son of Bronwyn. Bring the surveying equipment. Um, perhaps you didn't hear. This is Theo. His mother was Bronwyn. Guys, no one knows who that is. This is so embarrassing. Oh, uh, that's great. 
Uh, and who are you? Well, he's the leader of half the colony, here to help me uphold the agreement we made with your queen. What agreement? If there had been an agreement, surely it would have been with, um, the, the king of the Southlands, which actually, now that we're talking about that, last time you guys saw him, he was riding off with Galpal to get healed. And you were all like, yeah, our king. So, did the elves ever bother to loop you guys in that the guy that you were like, yeah, that's our king, that he was definitely not your king and he was actually Sauron? Agreements changed. We'll build the watchtower inside of the river. Sell a few houses if need be. Ugh, this place is so gross. Isildur? Awkward hug. Your sister will be so glad. Uh, and, and, and me too, of course. Um, I, I never gave up hope. Not me. Nope, not ever. Even when they said there were no survivors. There wouldn't be. If not for Beric. The real MVP! Let's hear it for Beric! Cut to Beric. <laughs> I trust there's room on the ship. Oh, plenty. Then one more should be no trouble. No passage for low men. I survived an eruption. My sister's a guild member. My father is captain to Queen Regent Miriam. But no one is saying you can't go. You can definitely go. Surely an exception can be made. Sorry, actually my dad is king now and your dad is wanted for treason. What? And if I had in my way, the old fool would be dead. That's it! Shall I have them slaughter the horse? No, not Beric! Disrespect me again and you really will be lost to Middle-earth. Hear ye, hear ye, you are no longer a colony, you are a fortress. Wanna stay? Bring us some timber for constructing our armada. Why would you want to construct your armada all the way out here? Wouldn't you want it to be like next where your armed forces are so they can board? What about the supplies you promised? No timber, no supplies, capiche? Shouldn't be a problem, right? They're only trees. Oh no, not the ants again. Meanwhile in the forest, Gal's out walking with the orcs. Love how that one guy has his hand on her arm, like that's gonna make a difference. They find Evil Ned meditating at a random rock. They're all out and about on this sunny day. The orcs have really turned a corner. I'm so proud of them. The she-elf turned herself in. Well, that's not quite what happened, but okay. I accept your terms, Uruk. I have what Sauron seeks. What terms? When did he offer terms? End this slaughter and I will do as you asked. I will help you destroy him. Okay, a couple of things. First, if you're gonna make a deal with him, the time to do that was before he invaded, because it is well past over for a Region. And second, what exactly is your leverage right now? Because why would he need to make a deal with you? He can just take the rings off you right now. Maybe she has any separate sleeve that I'm not aware of. Okay, let's see where this goes. How do you expect to destroy Sauron without your rings? And he reveals he's wearing her ring. It would seem that even wounds that have endured an age can sometimes yet be healed. And he is looking smooth and sexy. Adar? When last I looked like this, I was known by another name. What was it? Doesn't matter. Adar is the name I earned. Help me earn it back. Earned how? Does Adar mean something? How did you lose it? Is it actually a title? How are you going to earn it back? Take it. Help me vanquish Sauron with it, and I swear I'll take my children back to Mordor. Uh-oh, scars are creeping back in. So the trees had that tree playing that meant that the elves were also dying, but then when three elves put some rings on, that cured the tree plague and also the elves, and even when the elves take off their rings, the trees are still healed. Like, that was a permanent change. But now, Adar putting the ring on healed him, but if he takes the ring off, then the healing is instantly undone. So, do these rings have healing powers or not? What do they do? What are their powers? I am super unclear on that. I have slain more of your children than any elf alive. I don't know if this is the time to bring that up. I forgive you. Wow. No more flames. No more darkness. Let this ring heal the rift between elf and orc. Okay, so as far as I understand it, orcs were elves that were tortured into being evil and ugly. So if there is a rift between your kind, are you proposing that we just stop torturing elves into being orcs? And we're just gonna let the orcs that exist kind of die out? Is that the plan? Let us create a lasting peace in Middle-earth. Gal takes back her ring, but it doesn't do any healing on her. Cut to an orc being carried in a hammock. What happened? We found Sauron. He tried to make him betray you, but he wouldn't. Sauron did this. Guys, there are like a thousand orcs dying. Why, why does this one guy matter so much? It's too late. It's never too late. It's too late! It's a trap! Evil Ed gets stabbed! And then all the orcs are stabbing him. Why have they turned on him? Gal's standing by and doing nothing. Cut to Morgoth's crown and Sauron! Dun, dun, dun! 
Sauron, Galadriel. <gasps> Evil Ned's still getting stabbed, just like Sauron was during that prequel bit. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. My children. They are not children anymore. They were never children. I mean, when they were elves, they were elf children, but... What orders, Lord Sauron? Are they ever going to tell us what he said to so thoroughly convince them to 180 like this? Or is it just his riz? Raise a region. Leave no elf alive. Bring me their leaders. So if we follow the order of operations, that means they kill all the elves, including the leaders, and then bring the dead leaders to him? Hail Sauron! Hail Sauron! Oh, this was your design from the beginning. After all the orcs turned on you, you got yourself shipwrecked at the same time that I was headed for Valinor so that we'd run into each other, and then both me and Numenor, you tried to dissuade me from battle, which you knew would only make me want to contradict you, and then you went with us to the Southlands because I begged you to, and then watched as a volcano erupted, which you somehow also planned, and then you got yourself stabbed because you knew the only possible thing I could do after that was drag you across half of Middle-earth to get you to an elven healer who you knew would be in the same place as the greatest elven smith, Calabrimbor, and then you'd have a chance to get close to him and give him ideas on how to craft rings, but then I figured you out. So you went to Mordor and told them all about you being alive and the ring plan before going right back to Eregion because that would make them come to try to kill you, which would be good because you knew the ring project would for sure get done before they got there, and then as soon as you talked to these orcs that turned on you a little while back, they'd suddenly love you and instantly turn on their leader and you'd have an army. Please, you think too much of me. The road goes ever winding, not even I see all its paths. Gal goes for the sword. Oh snap! Is this the end for Sauron? Sauron blocks with Morgoth's crown! Sauron sees the ring. It is even more beautiful than Kelly Belly led me to believe. Is it though? Give it to me. Ah, the master manipulator. Subverting expectations by taking the direct approach. It is not my wish to harm you. Do you wish to heal me? What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I wish to heal all Middle-earth. Flashback. Raise a region. Leave no elf alive. Bring me their leaders. End of flashback. As you have a region, attack! Cut to a region in ruins. Pop Elf has been taken prisoner, but he's still got his ring, so that's good. Really not seeing how these rings were doing much, besides giving the wearer plot armor, but that's not nothing, so... Oh, looks like they got Elrond, too! They're knocking down the statue of... Someone important, presumably. They've piled all the writings and have brought Elrond and Papa Elf out just in time for the one orc to set it ablaze. No, you can't burn that! It's all of Kelly Belly's how-to guides! Kill us, but save the manuals! If Sauron really is in charge here, I feel like he would have asked for that stuff, but I don't know. The orc laughs and sets it on fire anyway. Cowardly traitors! Sorry, who did they betray? I mean, they did betray Evil Ned, but I don't feel like Papa Elf would care about that. Elrond punches a few, sets one on fire. That pisses them off, understandably. But the one orc reminds them that Sauron wants them unharmed. I mean, technically he didn't say that, but that was the spirit of his request. Arendir? He's alive? Does he count as one of their leaders? Since when? Back to Sauron kicking Galpal's ass. Fighting, fighting, fighting. It's so tense, I wonder who'll win. Sauron keeps landing slashes, and so far Galpal's ring has done diddly about it. I am once again asking, what do these rings do? Sauron uses the crown again to lock in their blades, which is cool, but um, not really what crowns are for. You of all elves must know that to find the light, we must first touch the darkness. Again, it's like poetry, so if they rhyme. We are not the same. It was just an illusion. Not all of it. Ah! Galpal kicks Sauron over the edge. R.I.P. Sauron. Oh, wait, it's not that far. He's probably okay. Galpal goes in for the kill, but then she stops. His hair is brown again and she cannot kill a brunette. Fighting at your side, I felt if I could just hold on to that feeling. <laughs> Gal goes in again for the kill, but misses, dang it. Sauron walks behind a rock and comes out the other side as Gal pal? Well, we know there's nothing that she loves as much as herself. There's no way she's gonna stab that, so well played, Sauron. They could no longer distinguish me from the evil I was fighting. Did Gal say that at some point? I've lost track. Gal slashes at her, or his arm, and whoosh, it's now Kelly Belly. Oh, I miss that guy. Are they not the seeds you planted? Sorry, what are we talking about? The rock they're standing on abruptly and seemingly without cause just collapses. Gal drags herself toward her sword. Those couple lunges at Sauron really tuckered her out. Sauron walks past, back in his elven glow-up era. I see you. Gal manages to drag herself over to her sword, but she seems to have injured the arm that has her ring hand. And again, I am wondering what the ring is for. I know your mind. The door is still open. The door is shut. Wham! She slams him against the rock. And we're back to hacking and slashing, some screaming, some slow-mo, the whole deal. My favorite is when one of them lands a hit 
And instead of pressing the advantage, they pause so that we can get a reaction shot and then they kind of like reset for the next round. Oh snap, he got her right in the heart too. R.I.P. Gal Pal. I would have placed a crown upon your head, but instead you stabbed her with one. I would never have rested until all Middle Earth had been brought to its knees to worship the light of its queen. You see, Lord of the Rings would have you thinking that Sauron was just the evil bad guy, but once upon a time, he was a hot simp and we have rings of power to thank for setting the record straight. The three peoples of Middle Earth will always resist you. Gal Pal dies. Sauron tosses his sword aside, because why finish the job when you can instead not? Whoops, the nine fell out of her bra at some point. The rings are mine. Yeah, no, we got that, but thanks for saying it anyway, I guess. Gal Pal is still dying. Remarkably little blood loss, I must say. Horn blows in the distance. Everyone looks bewildered. Dwarves! Suddenly arrows are flying. Orcs are dying. See, hey, better late than never, right? Arondir is taking out all the orcs. He looks like he's never felt better. I'm sorry, did he not get stabbed in the battle before? I, I swear. Elrond shouts at a random dwarf, Durin! Turns around and uh, it's not Durin. Honestly, that was kind of racist, dude. The prince is in mourning. Okay, guys, now is really not the time for this. You're kind of in the middle of a battle. Back to Sauron and Gal. Give me your ring. Gal is still alive somehow, but I feel like you could just take the ring off her. Like, even if you didn't want to finish the job, like... Gal gets up again, looking sort of hypnotized, and there's basically no blood on her, which, after getting stabbed in the heart, I'd say is a pretty neat trick. Galadriel, your ring. Oh snap, she's taking it off. Lordy, that thing is hideous. You wish to heal Middle Earth? Looks like Gal's gonna drop it in his palm. Psych! Heal yourself! And she goes tumbling backward off the edge. On purpose. Maybe if you die, you can just take the ring off of your body. You know that, right? Cut to Papa Elf and Arendir, looking up just in time to see the wee speck in the distance that is Galadriel falling from the cliff's edge. What alerted them to the fact that this was going on and that that was the exact right moment to see that tiny speck falling? I guess that's just what elf eyes see. R.I.P. Yalpal, for real this time. Sauron is brooding. We are overwhelmed, Lord Sauron. The dwarves are helping the elves. If we pursue, many will die. Sauron just stabs him. The other orc reads the room real fast and makes a quick getaway. Cut to Galpal's corpse. Pop Elven Arendir just up and left the battle so they could go check out that speck they saw fall from the cliff. They find her stab wounds from the crown, but the rest of her is fine. These are not merely wounds of the body. Her immortal spirit is being drawn into the shadow realm. I feel like falling from the cliff would have made her spirit vacate her body altogether, but... Papa Elf fixes his bling and then starts chanting over her. Elrond stops by. I guess he followed them, but he wasn't like with them when they left the battle. Elrond finds her ring. See, if she hadn't done that stupid, I mean, um, super clever and cunning uh, fake out, she would have been wearing the ring when she fell. But um, it fell right next to her somehow, so I guess it all worked out. The darkness is too powerful. I cannot save her. I can. Papa Elf and Aaron Deer look hopeful. We can. They remain posed dramatically for a beat. Are we gonna move on, guys? This situation seems kind of urgent. The camera stays on Elrond's face for a while. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it! <laughs> Elrond puts on the ring. And they just put the ring on her? Seemed to work wonders for evil Ned. I mean, before the whole stabbing thing. It fades to black. Will Galpal survive? The suspense is killing me. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Galaxy's Edge, the Not Hobbits are dealing with the aftermath. We have to fix it after my family. Well, you know, Mr. Burroughs sat me down and told me some things can't be fixed. Well, you're just a barrel of sunshine, aren't you? Some things lost are lost forever. Okay, while that's true, y'all are dealing with a village that just needs to be rebuilt. And like, technically you are correct. It cannot be built exactly the way that it was before. But that's a really poor attitude to be taking. Cut to the dwarves who are having a funeral. The, the throne has been covered in black cloth. The throne is a symbol of power, of title, of, of rank, of position. So the office of king didn't die, just the guy that most recently was king. Does the chair need to mourn the person that was most recently sitting on it? Or Also, the king didn't just die, he was killed by a Balrog! Are you not evacuating immediately? Like, run, run away! What are you still doing here? <laughs> Cut to Elrond looking at the ruins of a Region. No matter how hard we fight, 
Cut to the elf refugees leaving a region. How much it hurts. Cut to the Southlands not enjoying being under new management. Or how much our hearts yearn. Girly holding hands with that dude that was gonna build a house as the one Numenorean ship sails away, presumably with a sealed door aboard. Guessing the heart she's yearning for is a uh, AC Elders. Okay, but before we continue with this montage of sadness, um, can we address the fact that Numenor had one ship here and is like, y'all better give us all a timber. Okay, bye. And they're not gonna leave anybody to enforce this. Whatever, anyway, back to the montage. To put them back together. He sealed her aboard the ship, gazing longingly at the girl he met a few days ago who stabbed him, lied to him, has a boyfriend, and who's kinda hot. Cause this world's so much bigger than any of us. Cut to Muriel, finally in handcuffs. Thank you! And sometimes the winds blowing against us are just too strong. Cut to Elendil fulfilling his vision and riding away. At those times, Mr. Burroughs said, we've just got to accept it. Elendil gazing at smoke rising from Numenor. What's broke is broke and won't fix. Cut to Sauron brooding over Kelly Belly's hammer, which he somehow found after Kelly Belly threw it out the window while Eregion was besieged. And all anybody can do is try and build something new. And we're back to Galaxy's Edge. So when Nori was like, we have to fix it, I took that to mean we need to help them to rebuild this, this little village. But Samantha Wise responded by reciting verbatim a monologue that the old dude had told to her when her family died about how the world is huge and the winds are strong and things that are broken can't be fixed but can be replaced, which has so little to do with a family dying. I guess it's kind of related to a village needing to be rebuilt, but like, is it though? Because it, it, it's pretty much the same thing Nori said. Like, she, when she said fix it, she meant rebuild it. Like, you're, what are you contributing to this conversation? Great Value Gandalf is hugging the not hobbits. Rufio chimes in with, Thank you kindly, Grand Elf. No! God, please, no! No! Huh. Kind of like the sound of that. Goodbye, Grand Elf. So we're really doing this. Grand Elf. They've never seen an elf before. Never even left home before. I tried to help them pack, but it's their first migration. They haven't the foggiest what to bring. What do you mean I tried to help, but they don't know what to bring? Telling them what to bring is the help that they need. And what to leave. Great contribution. If I had my druthers, we'd be trucking all across this land, eating snails and beetles, just vibing. Oh no, I'd hate to miss out on that. It's about time we went our separate ways. Yeah, we're very different creatures. For one thing, eating snails and beetles all the live long day sounds like my worst nightmare, and it is your dream. Not so different. Nori walks a few feet away, stops, turns around, Exchanges glances with Great Value Gandalf while emotional music swells. Everybody's gone. The place is empty. Why did they leave instead of just rebuilding? Like, most of the infrastructure looks like it's intact. I feel like they're giving up way too fast. Great Value Gandalf wanders around. What's this? A stick? Cut to Tom Bombadil. Great Value Gandalf just lets himself in. Super rude. It was all a test, wasn't it? I was meant to choose friendship over power. I was meant to find... This! A wizard does not find his staff. The one chooses the wizard, Mr. Potter. Like his name. Gandalf. That's what they're going to call me, isn't it? Now let the song begin. And Tom and Great Value Gandalf start singing together, and Great Value Gandalf knows all the words somehow, because magic, I guess. Meanwhile, in Casa Doom, they're still looking at that empty throne. The Region has fallen. The survivors have fled north. Elrond? He led them. Okay, get him a message that Khazad Doom is ready to help. Too little, too late, I think. We have troubles of our own, love. Like how you have a giant fire monster in your basement? Your father's passing has left us in a bit of a tangle. I'm sorry, that's the crisis? The, the succession? Not the fire monster in your basement? The other dwarf lords paid your dad a ton and they want what's owed. Actually, there's also a rumor that you weren't your dad's first choice as heir and your brother seems to be gathering support. His brother? Where's this dude been hanging out? They glance at the pile of evil rings. Dun, dun, dun. Meanwhile, in the forest, Gal Pal's waking up. Pity, I've never known you to be such peaceable company. He chooses now is the time to explore the concept of having a sense of humor. Gal's halfway up before Papa Elf's like, no, no, rest. We're safe here. You are in the wilderness, entirely exposed. What is this place? A sanctuary. I mean, maybe it will be, but right now it is the wilderness. Protected by the elven rings. So anywhere the rings are, 
is a sanctuary? Elrond puts the ring back on her finger. Y'all just gonna pretend that kiss never happened? I mean, probably wise. Arondir stops by. Commander, Arondir. I have gathered the others, High King. They await your decision. Sauron's orcs are everywhere. Nowhere is safe. Apart from the sanctuary, right? We have to decide if we want to play offense or defense. The sword or the shield? Many of Eregion's best fell. Few survived. Everyone's pretty messed up. What do you think we should do, Commander Galadriel? I would remember what Kelly Belly said. Cut to the survivors, including number two, who told them the dwarves weren't coming. I thought that guy was toast for sure, but he looks fine, so that's great. The opposite of dark isn't strong. The opposite of dark is light, and the sun yet shines. Yeah, um, that's really nice and all, but um, the question was, do we prepare our defenses or do we attack? And I'm kind of struggling to translate the whole light dark thing into a plan of action. Everyone starts looking up as Gal climbs to the top of a rock. Papa Elf slow-mo unsheathes his sword. I don't know what that means, but the crowd gets it. They start unsheathing their swords and screaming and cheering as well. Okay, jokes aside, I feel like this is supposed to be like an inspirational moment showing all these elves raising their weapons and screaming. But something about seeing this peaceful, beautiful forest populated with elves screaming with bloodlust is so disturbing. <laughs> like, am I supposed to be rooting for these guys? And it's a wrap. Rings are made, show's over. So where are we at the close? The rings, completed, and Sauron's got him. Evil Ned, dead. Um, the elves, they left Eregion and are bloodthirsty and screaming. Galpal is alive, has her ring, and has added cliff diving to her special abilities. Elrond is alive and is coming around on the whole rings thing. Uh, Durin knows his dad was killed by a Balrog, but cares more about succeeding him as king than about getting the fuck out of there. Great Value Gandalf found his name and his stick, but he lost his Not Hobbits. And the Not Hobbits are no longer important, so farewell to them. Uh, Numenor is, um, honestly, I have no fucking idea what those guys are doing. I, I just, uh, the Southlands, um, are they still important? I, I can't tell. And uh, yeah, that's where we are. I'm so excited to see what happens next season.